to be a good salesperson, then you have to be a listener. How many people like to listen? So you listen and you find out what the, what the people's problems are and you have to solve them. I had seven jobs before I started Penn Jerry's Paper Company. I went to work for a Dages Paper Company, a client of mine, okay? I worked for Dages Paper Company for about eight or nine years. And he decided to move out of Philadelphia and I decided to stay. So I started my own company. When I was a kid, um, in order to start the business, my dad really had no money and he had three kids already. And uh, he borrowed money from his mom and dad and borrowed money from my mother's mom and dad and they second mortgaged their house. And I do remember having conversations or hearing conversations from my mom and dad about, are we gonna lose this house? You know, you risk everything that we have. We borrowed money from both our parents and is this gonna be successful? Because in the very beginning, they had a very difficult time. When my dad started the business in 1963, I was eight years old. And the first uh, time he opened the doors, I actually helped sweep the warehouse. I started with uh, around 10 people. And, uh, and then I, used to, so I started Pen Jerry's Paper Company. And uh, I had to go out and ask every customer of mine before I started the company that I'm leaving, I'm starting my own company, would you like to come with me? Except everybody came with me uh, except one. Yeah, in fact, you know, George Thomas, who works here also in operations, he and I used to gas trucks on Saturdays when we were in high school for $15 and a hoogie. The, the salesman didn't set the prices, I set the prices. It was one price. At one time, I went to a customer, and the customer says, you're a thief. And I said, I'm not a thief. He said, you're a thief. Of course, the competition came in and lowered the prices. I said, go out and ask the other shop bags what they're ordering. And he went out, and when I came back a week later, you could ask Butch. When I come back a week later, he says, you're still a thief, but I'm still buying from you. Yeah, so realistically, back in 63, they didn't have supermarkets like they have today. They were more, you know, meats, have a deli and some produce. There was never bakery, there wasn't prepared foods, there wasn't that, a lot of that kind of stuff. And so he started out selling supermarkets, but he also sold like small uh, meat stores and independent delis and things of that nature. And there really wasn't a lot of packaging. So maybe we had five, 600 items at the most. Was I scared or nervous? Yeah. Uh, no, but the problem was, maybe I was too confident, the problem was that uh, I didn't know the business and we didn't make any money. You know, uh, you know, a funny story is, and I don't know if he told you this, is that uh, he om they almost went bankrupt. And he went to one of his competitors called Enterprise Paper Company and said, um, I'd like you to take over my company and give all my sales guys jobs. And the guy said to him, I'd rather see you go out of business. Unfortunately, we continued to grow, worked harder, that guy actually came and asked my dad for a job. And the type of guy my dad is, he actually gave him a job. So we were always able to go, for, uh, go, for, uh, go into a new venture. And that was why we became successful. Yeah, as the evolution, and one of the good things about my father and I, and really my dad, a lot of it was his strategic being able to look into the future. So we really weren't selling um, Janssen products. We found this small company that had financial problems. And we never really bought the company. We just really gave everybody jobs. So that kind of put us into the janitorial business. We always sold janitorial. We always sold paper towels and toilet paper to supermarkets and everything else. But then we started expanding into uh, more into uh, uh, cleaning supplies and stuff like that. So then we saw there was a niche for us to get into selling uh, assisted living and nursing homes, both Jan Sam products, as we were now selling Jan Sam products, and sell our food service disposables into uh, nursing homes. So that kind of put us into the healthcare business. And then as the evolution goes, we continue to add more products. And then 11 years ago, we decided to sell you know, restaurant supplies in terms of glassware, smallwares, flatware, 
you know, grills and ovens and urns and things of that nature. That's a whole nother product line. So when somebody came in and showed us something new, I always felt that why not take a chance? What could we lose? Okay. It's, uh, so that's why we've been, when I started this company uh, 54 years ago, there was 20 distributors. Now there's no distributors around. Yeah, the one th good thing about business is you have to be able to adapt and change, yeah. right? One of the good things I always remember from a Clint Eastwood movie was, you know, Marines, we adapt and improvise. And that's something that we've always done. We've always been, adapt been able to adapt to a situation and then do some, you know, improvising in order to make us move forward in the future, not to stay stagnant and be who we were 20 years ago. Because if we were the same company we were 20 years ago, we'd be out of business. couldn't uh, service the small customers anymore. So we decided to open a store, okay? And we opened at the uh, Red Lion Road. And we opened a store that the people come in. We, uh, we opened a small store and put stuff out there, and re like retail, and people come in and did retail. And uh, it was pretty successful. Yeah. And then we, we decided to open uh, Armengo. We were looking for a location, we opened Armengo. So we've always had this, you know, it, back in the day in our paper distribution industry, a lot of people used to have party goods stores. So it was always, well, oh, we should open up a party goods store. We, and then we kind of just kind of adapted that we always wanted to have some sort of place where smaller businesses could come and pick up product. And um, on Red Line Road, we had a small uh, section of the warehouse that we turned into a cash and carry and created a, a cash and carry there. And we found an old drug emporium that was on Aramingo Avenue. It was about a 22,000 square foot building. And we started this thing where we'd have small businesses come in and buy some of our product and we carried some food product and so forth. So when I graduated from college, you know, even though I was working, um, they had just put a computer system in. So as soon as I graduated from college, I went to computer school to figure out how to run our computer system. Yeah. So I graduated from school in 77, and that June, I went right to computer school. I, you know, I did some computer, you know, key punch cards back in the day and compiled programs and so on and so forth. Well, the good thing that it did was it helped me understand about business, to be perfectly honest with you. And I really came up in this company, not on the sales side, I came up on the operations side and didn't become a salesman until the 80s. And every year, you know, my dad would see if I could take on more responsibility. So he'd give me more responsibility, more responsibility. And the way he handed over that responsibility is he would tell whoever the manager was at that point to come and talk to me. So he never really said, my son's in charge. He just used to say to that other person, start seeing my son, or go talk to my son. 15 years ago was when I really start, started taking on full responsibility for the organization. But every year, I got more responsibility. The doctor tells other patients about me because my doctor told me to keep working. Okay, so if I was home, I'd be looking at television all day. You know, and there's nothing on television, so I bother coming to work. When I see my family, I see people. When I go out, and, so this way I'm not afraid to drive, I'm not afraid to do anything I want to do. Something drives me. And I see things in here, and sometimes my son would like to see me come to his office, but I still own the company, I can do anything I want. <laughs> I, I see us continuing to grow. I see us still looking to acquire companies. I see us looking to have a fourth marketplace at some point. It's probably not gonna be for another two years yet. Um, I see us continuing to be a family business. I continue to see us invest in the infrastructure and into uh, young people that help us look differently than we looked um, years past and look us to be successful. different today, uh, different than when I started uh, 
And you talk to people today, they say they can't build relationships. It's hard for me to understand why you can't. You know, we'll say today that it's not the same, but it is the, really the same today. That if you aren't able to create a relationship with a potential account and show them some value to solidify the relationship, because you can have a great relationship, but if you're not showing value to the account, that relationship is in, on a weak standing. But if you're able to um, start a relationship, show the customer value, show them why they should do business with you and continue to do business with them because you either can show them how to make more money, how to save some money or increase their bottom line. And that's how that whole relationship evolves. And that's still the backbone of this business. The trouble is today, uh, people don't listen. They don't have time to listen. Even though I'm the owner of the company, a lot of people are not afraid to talk to them. But I'll listen to them. Why not? Okay. Why not see what they're thinking? Never want to be the biggest, just be the best. Anybody can be the biggest, but just be the best.